Let's get more information now about uh, crypto exchanges and digital asset brokers uh, with uh, Stephen Ehrlich. You see there, he is the former VP brokerage at E-Trade. A lot of uh, former E-Traders uh, work at Voyager Digital. Former CEO of Lightspeed Financial, 25 plus years experience in capital markets and a frequent keynote speaker at crypto conferences. Uh, Stephen was actually on CNBC the other day. Good to see you, sir. How was that experience? It was a lot of fun, but thanks for having me and, and happy to be here. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we were getting some publicity based upon uh, the Coinbase offering from last week. Uh, so we're getting some publicity now. Well, that's great. And you're, and you're getting some more here. Not CNBC, but, you know, people are watching. So uh, let me ask you, uh, I'm just going to run through some numbers here. Uh, you've got explosive growth the last while, as you know, 35 percent month over month. You've got something like 2.4 billion in assets uh, under management uh, as we speak. More than that now, probably. 270,000 funded accounts, and you've pretty well 10x, 12x everything in about six months' time. So, uh, how are investors discovering Voyager Digital? Are you doing a lot of marketing? Uh, how are you seeing this big influx? Yeah, you know, we've uh, we've concentrated on our marketing uh, over the last six months and our product development. I think uh, I was listening to you. While I was getting my earpiece uh, fixed and, and lost power there for a second. Uh, about our uh, interest bearing program. So we're getting the word out about us through our marketing channels uh, and just making presentations uh, at many, many conferences to get people to know what we're doing uh, and joining our platform. And the other way is that we have our own token, the Voyager token that has a great community. And that community has you know, made an unbelievable referral network for us. And so we're scaling our business by just word of mouth in addition to all our digital marketing that we're doing. And it's really exciting for us. Uh, we're excited about our growth. Uh, Stephen, you know, Coinbase was a high profile uh, uh, going public transaction. Uh, I was going through their prospectus uh, last night uh, and reading about it. Tell the, tell the investment community a little bit about why you're and how you're different from uh, Coinbase. Yeah, we have a different business model uh, than Coinbase. We are a broker. We're not an exchange. Our sole purpose is to serve customers. We're connected to 10 plus exchanges, market makers, liquidity providers. We bring a depth of liquidity to our customers so that they can get instant executions on over 50 coins and earn interest at the same time. So we're not tied to one exchange for liquidity. We go across the globe. That gives consumers the best opportunity to be successful and create wealth in the crypto market. Right. And, and tell me a little bit about, you know, what, as a broker, uh, you're making a market, you're capturing a spread you're char or you're charging a fee. Um, there's two questions, actually. One, the role of HFTs, uh, you know, Virtue Financial is obviously gr gaining a lot of experience or a lot of exposure trading these currencies. You know, the other brokers naturally come in when there's volatility. So there's that is aspect of it. And then also just from a business perspective, you're taking, you're, because you're able to pay inv your investors uh, interest, you're loaning out their currency and their coins to other investors. You're charging a fee for that. Um, how do you protect or hedge? I know you, you're working on your proprietary technology to manage all these things, but how do you protect your investors' assets in periods of extreme volatility of the currency when, when you're, you may have a, your, your, you're, the person that you've lent it to, you may be actually a margin call. Uh, I know you, sp you spend a lot of time on know your client and who you're lending your money to, but nonetheless, we're going through a lot of exp a lot of volatility, and you know there's been some major uh, hedge funds that have blown up in the, in the world. So how do you handle that? Yeah, that's a great question. Look, we, uh, you know, this world will have HFTs. We work with a lot of market makers as well as exchanges to make sure we bring liquidity. But when we lend the tokens, we work with three major parties. Uh, one is Galaxy Digital, which is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a you know very large balance sheet. The other is BitGo, a major custodian that also has a large balance sheet. And then Jump Capital, which is a major market maker and has a large balance sheet. We do not lend our coins to uh, hedge funds or crypto funds. We only work with large balance sheet players. That's how, what makes us feel really secure about how the lending program works. Because we give almost all the interest, if not more, back to consumers these days. So we're protecting their assets by who we lend to. A lot, you know, it's very different from other players in the industry, but that's how we protect customer assets. 
Right. You mentioned Galaxy Digital run by uh, Mike Novogratz, of course. And there was that story the other day that uh, they may, look, may be looking to buy uh, BitGo. They already own a stake in them. So I just want to ask you about uh, the, your stock, which has just done tremendously well, consolidating lately. And some of that consolidation seemed to coincide with leading up to Coinbase's uh, listing and, and after that as well. Do you think that there were uh, U.S. investors in your stock because you were kind of the only game in town, uh, and, and now that maybe they flowed out of your stock into Coinbase, is that a possibility? And, and I see your your stock has bounced back nicely today, up fifteen percent. Yeah, you know that's a possibility. I think uh, there has been some consolidation, probably some movement of investment across the crypto industry, some into like Jamie, you know Jamie's stock at HUD eight, and there's some some movement going on around the industry right now. But that said, you know our stock has bounced back today. Uh, we announced the opportunity for us to do a buyback. We think our shares are are really un, under uh, undervalued right now, based upon the growth that we've seen at the end of March and into April and continuing into April. Uh, so we announced a, a company buyback that we can't start for uh, a few weeks, but we believe our stock is really undervalued, uh, and sent this buyback out to show the market how much we believe in our business and the metrics that we're seeing every day. Right, I saw that today. You're going to buy back as much as a five percent of your uh, your float. That's interesting. Um, I'm wondering about, and we talked about this while we were waiting to get you uh, set up. Do you ultimately see only a few players in this sector, and there'll there'll be consolidation? And and would you want to be a consolidator, or are you open to being uh, taken out by somebody? Uh, you know, uh, look, I think this business. I've seen this this happen before. I was at E-Trade. Uh, 1999 to 2006, I, I call it the formative years. We saw major consolidation across that industry uh, through those seven years. And at one point, I was the one doing the consolidation for E-Trade and buying companies. Then years later, E-Trade sold. So, you know, we're happy in our position. We will be a consolidator. We will look for acquisitions. We're active on that market front today. Uh, we think that's a great way, for, way, great way for us to scale and add products to our business. Uh, as well. So it, it's really a, a page right out of the book we used at E-Trade many years ago. We're using that same playbook. Stephen, what do you see the role of regulation? Uh, how's that going to affect your business? Government regulation is obviously going to come. Uh, and so the regulation for the industry and trade, the brokerage business, uh, and also the regulation of crypto assets, and how will that affect your business? Yeah, I think regulation will come. I think it'll be thoughtful regulation. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. Uh, I've spent some time with uh, different associations and congress congressmen and women, and under, you know, getting them up to speed on crypto. And I think it's going to come. I think regulation's great for the industry, but it's going to take time because we have a global marketplace. You know, everybody talks about, you know, uh, commissions and so forth. And that's in the equity world. You have a national best bid and offer in the states. That's because all the exchanges are run and controlled in the U.S. This is a global market. So you have pricing across the globe with coins across the globe. It's a much different animal. And there's so much opportunity for us to grow using that. But regulation will help us grow. Last question for you, Stephen. Uh, we're in boom times now, clearly, with the cryptocurrency. But uh, we have seen over the years, as you know, those uh, so-called crypto winters. So hypothetically, if a crypto winter started tomorrow and lasted for a year, how does your business model uh, survive that? Well, we are extremely well capitalized. Uh, we just raised over $150 million. We're profitable each month. We're, we're kicking off 50% EBITDA margins. I can't spend my money fast enough on the marketing front. Uh, we are extremely well positioned if there was a crypto winter uh, because of the balance sheet we've been able to put together. And we'll continue to market because I think, you know, we are adding products, we're adding savings products, and consumers will just flock to us for, cons for their savings products rather than trading as well. Well, as one of your peers once said, uh, Stephen, uh, everybody knows who Coca-Cola is, but they still market. So uh, it's got to be done. Thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. Stephen Ehrlich. All right. Some insight uh, on, uh, on on their company. What, what do you think here? Um, I, I think it's, you know, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, I know one of the directors very well, Christian Toth, uh, who just recently joined. Um, I, I think the it's it's an interesting space to be in that brokerage space because it's a very inefficient marketplace. Uh, and if they can uh, 
capitalize on that inefficiency, that global inefficiency that exists on the different on the decentralized trading, uh, and pay their customers attractively, uh, they will be able to grow their assets out administration for sure, as long as uh, individual investors, which I think is the, the, the bulk of their cl clients right now, as long as individual investors don't get distracted by trading just in, BT, uh, in, just in ETFs, because um, uh, that will then start, I think the, the currency world will potentially start consolidating. You know, I looked at Coinbase, for example, and while there's 50 coins uh, on uh, Voyager uh, right now, the bulk of the trading is happening in Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin US dollar uh, backed, uh, and Ethereum coins. So um, those other coins, they may have huge spreads that, they're, that, that Voyager is going to be able to capture and pass on to their clients. But the bulk of it's going to happen in those two marketplaces, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And what does that, what role does that play in narrowing spreads, making it more difficult for the voyagers of the world to capture spread and or char uh, charge higher lending rates and pay that on their customers? It's going to be a very interesting dynamic to, to pay attention to.